class, this is a test. Take out your pencils and papers and get ready. We're going to have a pop quiz. How many of you have heard this when you were in school and all of a sudden your sweat begins pouring out of your hands and you're trying to think, oh my gosh, what did I learn? What did I learn? Can I remember it? Well, Yahweh God does the same thing. As my beloved husband says, God does not announce that we are in a test suddenly. We're just in one. And Abi Yahweh wants to see how we will perform. It's easy to give lip service to God. It's easy to say, yes, Abba Yahweh, I want to obey you in all that you've called me to do. But when he starts asking you to give up things that you think you need or want, but they are not of him, then the testing starts. Who do you really put first? A relationship? Money? A secret sin? Or Yahweh God Almighty who loves you so much, he sent his only begotten son, Yeshua, called in Greek, Jesus, to die for your sins so that you could return to heaven when you leave this earth if you accept his gift of sacrifice on Calvary. This is a test here on YouTube. This attack of Yah's holy and mighty wind ministry here on YouTube by fake Christians, Satanists, atheists, Yahweh God is allowing to test to see how his children will respond, how you and I will respond. Will we stand up and defend a holy ministry like a mighty wind which only seeks to lead souls to Yushua HaMashiach and warn of the coming great tribulation or will they sit idly by glad that it's not them being attacked? And how will you fare during the coming great tribulation if you cannot stand up for truth, righteousness, and justice now? This is a test. What is your grade score? Are you passing or failing? And how will you fare during the coming great tribulation if you cannot stand up for truth, righteousness, and justice now? How will you fare when you have to choose between taking the mark of the beast or giving your life up for Yeshua? This is a test. What is your grade score? Are you passing or failing? In Prophecy 103, I, Yahweh, judge you by your fruit, given to Prophet Elizabeth Elijah Nicomiah. Yahweh God says he grades his children and he explains the different ways that he grades does this. Some of us are in elementary school and some, Yushua's bride, are in graduate school. The more challenging the course, the harder the test. Abba Yahweh tells us to ask him our grades and he will tell us. To quote the prophecy, Abba Yahweh says, I grade you, my children, and on that day in heaven, when you stand before my throne and the book of life is opened, there shall also be your grade. So strive to live holy and obey Yah now so you can get your best grade possible. Some come forward and stand with us at a mighty wind, but when they're tested, they can't pass the test. Such was South Dakota Girl 30, who now goes by the YouTube name Sweet Soulful Sassy. South Dakota Girl 30 had the light of the Holy Spirit in her when she spoke with Prophet Elizabeth on the phone and said that she loved her in April 2011. She did a video testifying that Prophet Elizabeth was a true prophet of God and when she did the headache pain that she had been having left the minute she started the video. She told this to Prophet Elizabeth later. She also said that she had been praying that God would send someone to mentor her and Yahweh sent Prophet Elizabeth. God answered her prayer. But quickly after, Evil Bruce Red Smokey, who openly does voodoo in plain sight, included her name in a video about a mighty wind. And as fast as that, she turned on a mighty wind ministry and on Yahweh God. She took down her video testimony saying that Elizabeth Elijah was a true prophet of God and she joined with Yah's enemies. Now she's the girlfriend of an atheist who openly mocks God and all that is holy and who can hardly speak without using the F word and who used to publicize on his channel that he was a blasphemer of the Holy Spirit for which we know there is no forgiveness for from God. In any stand for the truth of salvation through Yeshua Jesus Christ in South Dakota Girl 30 quickly eroded away. She did a video saying not to take the Bible literally that Abraham made a mistake and that he should not have done what God had wanted him to in regards to Isaac. She also said that Jesus, Yeshua, would not insult anybody when he was not on his own turf. 
implying that if a drug user invited Yushua Jesus over for dinner, our Savior Yushua wouldn't say anything if they pulled out their drugs and started using them. Or if a hard rocker cranked up their satanic music, Yushua would allow it because he was a guest in their house. And that Yushua would just sit there, not rebuking a person if they looked at porn while Yushua was in their home, because this was not his turf. Insanity, isn't it? According to South Dakota Girl 30, of course Yushua would, because he would not want to upset them, and he wouldn't say anything. Yushua does come to sinners, and he ate with the tax collectors, but he rebukes sin, he rebuked sin and sinners, and he says, go and sin no more. Read the book of John chapter 8 about the woman caught in adultery. Yushua said, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven, but don't do it anymore. He doesn't want us to continue in his sin. What good is having a Savior if you're going to keep living the same life you lived before? All you have to do is look at the sweet, soulful, sassy channel and see who she's promoting to see that she is now part of a satanic network. She says it's no one's business what she says and does, but it is, since she has made it the Christian community's business as she's been trying to lead Yushua's sheep and lambs astray. Yahweh God speaks about dividing his children from unbelievers in the prophecies 111 and 113 given to prophet Elizabeth Elijah. South Dakota girl 30 left her husband because she did not want to be unequally yoked to a man who didn't love Yeshua. Yet now she commits adultery with an atheist boyfriend, and has become as foul as and she has become as foul and putrid as he is. She no longer has Yah's Holy Spirit, but demons and darkness that are plainly seen on her face. Yahweh God says South Dakota Girl 30 is now twice the child of hell. Hebrews 6, 4-8 This is a revelation given to Prophet Elizabeth from heaven. South Dakota Girl 30 actually had the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit got so fed up, the Holy Spirit left. Anyone that crosses that bloodline, meaning you go over Yahweh's grace and His mercy, they are now twice the child of hell. Yahweh God tested South Dakota girl 30 Ashley to see if she truly was his. If she truly would stand for truth, righteousness, and justice, or was only giving lip service. She and unfortunately others like her didn't pass her test, she failed. And I share this to warn you to encourage you to learn from her lesson and not follow her example. Scripture says, when the Holy Spirit leaves, it never returns. In Hebrews 6, 4-8, we read, It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God, and put him to open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it, and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. However, the Holy Spirit does not walk away from those who sin and repent, truly repent, and turn away from their sin and strive to live holy before God. This is different. However, those that the Holy Spirit leaves are those that go into all this blasphemous stuff purposely denying God. <clears throat> The satanic infiltrators are doing this here on YouTube. Their words and their actions tell people that you can fall away from God as far as you want and come back. However, these people are actually sent by the devil to try and pay, take souls to hell with them. They are actually sent by the devil to try to recruit others for the devil. Yahweh God says in Isaiah 55:11, My word cannot return to me void. And the Holy Spirit does not return, as we read in Hebrews. 
Therefore, these ones, pretending to have returned to God after blaspheming, saying, and doing all manner of evil before they die, they will openly deny the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, again. For the Holy Spirit will not return, as Scripture clearly states. <clears throat> this is a game that they play. Scripture clearly says in Ephesians 5.11, Do not fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. As a prophet of Yahweh God, Yahweh God shows me and other prophets what happens in the spiritual realm when we are in this battle here on YouTube and other spiritual battles. And what he shows me is that if I sympathize with someone's demons because I want to be, quote, a nice person or whatever the reason, I am sympathizing with their demons and those demons try to come on me. They take this as an invitation. Taking Red Smokey as, as an example as he led to South Dakota Curl 30's downfall because she said he was her friend and she couldn't block him off of YouTube so she allowed his curses and demons to remain on her channel. Yushua warns us and tells us to keep our channels clean. These are our holy bits of cyberspace. And he tells us not to allow um, those who serve the devil because they come with demons and curses. They have an ulterior motive for what they're doing. They're not coming sincerely saying, Oh, I love you. Jesus bless you. These are words. This is garbage. Why do they try to subscribe to us? If, you, if Every time Red Smokey gets a new channel, look out because he'll try to subscribe to you so he can send his curses. There's a connection there, I guess. This, as I understand it, there's a connection that he tries to use to send his curses. These people are not of God. They serve the devil. Okay, Red Smokey, taking him as an example. If I like him because he has certain demons that cause him to act goofy and appear to clown around. I guess this is a clowning demon. Who knows what else. They try to do this to get you to let your guard down. So if I do that, I'm in essence patting those demons and saying, Nice demon, I want to be your friend. And the demons are like, All right, we're moving in. If evil ones like Smokey can get you to be their friend, then they create a soul tie, giving them a link to you spiritually to cast their curses on you. This is why he and other evil ones like him are trying to subscribe to our channels to create a tie with us to send curses. Do you get it? The spiritual realm is real. It impacts the physical realm. Don't be fooled by lying words and don't sympathize with the devil. If you do, you may as well open the door and say, Come on in to Satan, for if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. This is why Yeshua wants us to live holy. Our Savior is so good to us. If we covet any sin, any demon, we are opening the door for more demons to enter in. Clean your house, your physical temple, your body, your spiritual, your mind, body, the spirit and soul. Strive to live holy. Don't, don't open the door for the devil. Don't let there be openings for the devil. Yeshua loves us so much. He warns us of, the, of that. Be ye holy as I am holy, he says. You should know that we are all works in progress. But those who are his children, who have accepted his gift of sacrifice on Calvary, and who acknowledge him as Lord and Savior and have a relationship with him. If you try to live holy and obey the Ten Commandments, the devil cannot have such easy access to you. Yes, Abba Yah will allow the devil to test you. So you can grow stronger spiritually as you rebuke him and don't entertain his lies, sin, and deception. Daily put on the full armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, and the double-edged sword of the Spirit. So dressed, we are ready to fight in the spiritual realm. Speak this out loud, say it as if it were, because this is your spiritual armor. This is from Ephesians 6, 10-18. Those of us at a mighty wind, we love all who belong to Yahweh God, Savior Yusha, and the precious Ruach HaKodesh. We pray for you and we intercede for you spiritually and we want to protect you. If we could, we would protect all of you and not allow any evil to befall you, but each of us must pass our own tests. In Philippians 2.12, it says, We all work out our salvation with fear and trembling. 
You cannot pass my tests, and I cannot pass yours. And trust me, all of us are tested. Until Yosha returns, the test will continue, and I pray that we all pass our test in Yoshua Mashiach's name. Yoshua tells Prophet Elizabeth, everyone wants to go to heaven. And there's only two ways out of this world. It's rapture or death. Yusha gave Prophet Elizabeth a dream. In the dream, he counted out pearls. One, two, three, all up to ten. And every tenth one, he would say, this one's mine. He kept counting every tenth one. This one's mine. This was a revelation to her from Yusha that one out of ten are his and their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So very, very few make it on the narrow road. Matthew 7, 14, we read, Small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Life meaning life eternal, life that never ends. In other words, the road to heaven is narrow and few find it. When you think it's so hard to live holy, how hard was it for our beloved Savior, you should have hang on that cross. And then he went the extra mile, taking those 39 lashes. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he loves you. They, then they hung him on a tree like a cursed person. When you sin, repent and turn from that sin, turning away from that sin. You repent daily with tears and sorrow and you say, Please, you shall forgive me and help me not to do this again. And he will. He will. We see it over and over. Don't give up. If you're struggling with something, don't give up. Give it to Yeshua. Ask Him to help you be strong. Ask Him to take away the desire to sin. Read the Bible. Spend time with Him. Spend time in prayer. Um, those who love Yeshua, we, we recommend you do communion every day. And remember His gift of sacrifice on Calvary. And when you do, repent. Ask Him to forgive you. There's nothing stronger in this world, in this universe, than the shed blood of Yeshua, our beloved Mashiach. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. If you stand and watch others taking a beating, you are just as guilty as those attacking, stoning with words. Yah says you are held just as guilty if you see someone standing up for truth and holiness and you just stand and watch like it's a soap opera. If everyone would stand up to the evil ones, the stoning with words of Yah's a mighty wind ministry, and others standing up for truth, righteousness, and justice, for Yah's word would not be taking place on YouTube now. Prophet Elizabeth had a dream in 2004. We were all on a playground, and a bully started picking on her, shoving her around, and punching her. Then another bully came. First it was a boy, then a girl, then a whole bunch of kids came all around just to watch. They were feeling sorry for her, but they were afraid to do anything, the ones watching, afraid that the bullies would start pounding on them. Elizabeth was fighting back alone in the dream because the YDS were not here yet. Yahweh said if the kids watching has, had just done something, then this wouldn't be happening, but they were too afraid. Then the dream continued. Yushua had another group of kids, and it was the YDS, Yushua's demon stompers, she now knows. And they would not stand by and just watch, and they weren't afraid. This group started pounding on the bully, and the bullies ran away because they were so badly beaten. Yah has raised up Yushua's demon stompers, sending two angels to prophesy it. That's what some people say to us when they write that they've been watching this soap opera here on YouTube. But they don't get involved. They don't want to stick their neck out. As I've said in other video, in other video, this is just a microcosm of what is coming in the Great Tribulation. If you can't stand up for truth, righteousness, and justice now when it's mere words, what are you going to do when they threaten your life? What are you going to do when they say you take the mark of the beast or you won't eat? Your children will starve. Is heaven more important to you or do you want to save your physical body? These are hard choices and hard tests. But we are at the time of the end. Yushua HaMashiach is coming back. God is judging this world, good or evil. Good or evil. Wheat or tares. As Yushua approaches, things are heating up. Things are heating up. In His holy presence, you, can't, you have to be one or the other. You can't be lukewarm. You have to choose. 
As I said at the beginning of this video, all of us are tested. How much do you love Yeshua Jesus? You want to pass your test? You've got to make the effort. You want to get that good grade? You've got to study. You've got to make the effort. You've got to put your heart and soul into it. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. I pray it's the Lord, God Almighty, Yahweh, Yeshua, and the precious Ruach HaKadosh. Hell is horrible. You don't want to go to hell. Watch Citizen in Hell, a revelation that Prophet Elizabeth was given of an actual man in hell. By some miraculous act of God, he was allowed to come to her and show her and warn her. She saw an outline of dim lights in the figure of a man, but it was such a horrific experience for her. This man actually wanted to come and talk to her again, but it was too much. Hell is real. It's a horrible, horrible place. Whatever sin you're committing, repent of it. Come out of agreement with these demons and devils. We had a mighty wind don't lead souls to hell like the enemies say. We keep telling them to prove it. Well, they can't. They just come up with another lie. Lie, lie, lie. That's all the devil does. So, I want to end this by saying that many want to be the bride of Yushua HaMashiach. You write to us and say, how, how can I be the bride? I want to be Yushua's bride. Well, there's a price to be paid to be Yushua's bride. It's the price of persecution, ridicule, slander, lies, etc. You must put Yushua first to be his bride. This means nothing stands between you and him. That you lay everything on the altar of sacrifice and you love him more than life itself. Yeshua says in the Great Tribulation, those who are guests will wake up. They will be anointed to give their lives as martyrs. <clears throat> they will know that they'd rather give up this physical life and have eternity in heaven with the Lord than save a physical life for the price of their own soul. It's not worth it. You mustn't fear man and you must seek to be spiritually strong to be Yeshua HaMashiach's bride. Yushua also says that it will be worth it. Praise Yushua. Yushua's bride have to suffer persecution now, but he is and will reward us for our faithfulness. Hang in there. Our bridegroom, Yushua Hamashiach, is so sweet, so loving and kind, and how we treasure him and our relationship with him. Let the scoffers scoff and the mockers let the scoffers scoff and the mockers mock. We have heaven and its treasures and rewards waiting for us if we persevere. Praise Yeshua. May those of you who are called to be Yeshua's bride stand strong. God bless and watch over you and also Yeshua's guests at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. And I just want to thank little Jessica for saying she likes my videos and she wants her mommy to turn on the Katharina channel. And I also say hi to her sister Jenny. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bye-bye.